Portage County Board of Supervisors meeting, recorded July 18, 2023. It's 5 o'clock, we'll call the Portage County Board to order. Roll call. We have 21 supervisors present. Supervisor Moresi, Supervisor Pataki, and Supervisor Hemrick are remote. Uh, pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Invocation by Supervisor Oki. Heavenly Father, we ask for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us engage in meaningful discussion, allow us to grow closer as a group, and nurture the bonds of community. Let us build a healthy environment with partnerships and policy which respects the past, mentors the present, and plans the future. Amen. Members of the public who wish to address the county board on specific agenda items must register their requests at this time with such comments subject to reasonable control of the county board chair as set forth in Robert's Rules of Order. Anybody from the public? I have two. Two people. Ms. Uh, Mr. Bertelson and then uh, Ms. Neville. Go ahead. Good evening. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Many of you have probably seen emails from me, so uh, this will give you a chance to see what I look like, and I'm, I'm glad I got room on the podium here where you can see me, so thank you for this time. Uh, my name is John Bertelson, Jr. Address is 3300 Arborvita Lane in Plover. I'm in District 16, which is what brings me here today for agenda item number nine. At the exec ops meeting, the three options for filling this position for Supervisor Olson is to leave it vacant, special election, or appoint uh, a nominee to it. And from what I understand, the clock starts today as far as 30 days to appoint somebody if that's the route you choose to go with agenda item number nine. Now, a little of my background, I don't know if I put an email or not, but uh, I wasn't interested in county government until I met Mr. Pavelski when his campaign sign said, uh, let's put integrity in government. All for that. So I uh, sent him an email. Why don't you think we have integrity in county government? What's your position on a new health care center? And uh, what's your position on cleaner water for Nelsonville? All important issues to me. And he was very, very generous with his time. He emailed me back. We, uh, we met in Scandinavia and spoke and spoke and spoke and spoke for uh, I think five and a half hours, a personal record for me. So I uh, got a minute 42, 41, 40, anyhow. <laughs> uh, I'm interested in filling the District 16 position. If, uh, if it works with my schedule, um, I mean, public service is important to me. It's uh, a lot of interesting, top, interesting uh, issues going on for Portage County, the healthcare center being one. I'm a huge advocate for a new building, but I understand the cost concerns too. The uh, water quality in Nelsonville, I've been going to land and water meetings since April of 2022, because I promised John if he were to win, I'd get involved somehow, but uh, nothing permanent. And uh, this gives me a chance to see how county government worked, and later in 2022, I started going to the Portage County Healthcare Center Board uh, Committee meetings because the referendum that was passed was not sufficient to cover all the costs that uh, turned out to be. So I'd like to see the public get a chance to uh, vote on another referendum. It looks like spring next year is the first possibility because I do believe in uh, a public nursing home as an option. Um, I'm a guardian for somebody from church. He has very specialized needs, and he had to go to another county for those needs. If we lose the Portage County Healthcare Center, that's one less option in our county. And uh, meeting Mrs. McDonald and knowing that's a five-star facility is, is it'd be an important asset that we want to keep. So again, uh, name's John Wilson Jr. I'm interested in the position that doesn't conflict, and I'm done in three minutes. Thank you, Mildred Neville. Mildred Neville, assuming that number nine is passed tonight 
and I expect it will be to fill District 16. The Exec Ops Committee will meet to recommend a person to appoint. And so tonight's the chance to say to the whole board that I hope if that takes place that the Exec Ops will take it seriously and actually do some discussion and not select a person in just a little over 60 seconds. Actually, I think it was 93 seconds um, with no discussion. I think the citizens of our county deserve better than that. I think everybody that puts their name in should be brought up, mentioned in the meeting, and some discussion should take place. I'm counting on it. Thank you very much. Correspondence number two, office. Uh, you want to read them? Before? Sure. Correspondence. Number two, Office of Portage County Clerk out of county resolutions. Number three, electronic packets for county board and committee meetings. And number four, Aging and Disability Resource Center for Portage County 2022 annual report. All those things were included in your packet. Uh, review and approval, number five, approval of June 20th, 2023 minutes. Motion by Supervisor Laddick, second by Supervisor Dubex. Any directions, changes? All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, confirmation of County Executive appointment, number six, appointment of Mark Hemrich to the Solid Waste Management Board for the uh, remainder of the term expiring April 15th, 2024. Do you have to read it? Mm -mm. No, okay. Uh, motion by Supervisor Soik, seconded by Supervisor Jankowski. Discussion? There's no discussion. All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number seven, Executive Operation Committee appointments. Number uh, Appointment of Mark Hemrich to the Land and Water uh, Conservation Committee for the remainder of the term expiring April 15th, 2024. <sighs> A motion by Supervisor Splinter, seconded by Supervisor Barry Jakowski. Discussion? There's no discussion. All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 <clears throat> abstain. Whoops. I'd like to abstain. We've got Honnell and Shabilsky abstaining. All those, do we have the call? Oh, that was it. Yeah. Motion carries. Uh, resolution and ordinances number eight, establishing November 1st, 2023, as the official annual meeting date for the Portage County Board of Supervisors for 2023. This is resolution number 134-2022-2024, submitted by the Executive Operations Committee. Motion by Su Supervisor Rakowski, seconded by Supervisor Jankowski. Discussion? No discussion. All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number nine, approval, uh, approving and authorizing filling the vacant supervisor uh, district 16 seat for the residual of the unexpired 2022-2024 term uh, by search and appointment. This is resolution 135-2022-2024 submitted by the Executive Operations Committee. Motion by Supervisor Barry Jakowski, seconded by Supervisor Sislevich. Discussion? Supervisor Honnell. I'm wondering if that resolution could be modified to include um, search, interview, and appointment. I think it's important that this process be really very, very transparent and that everybody who applies gets an opportunity um, for an interview. I think it's a courtesy almost for a county citizen. Um, and I'm wondering if we could make that modification. It's not, it's not set forth in the motion. I would say that uh, reviewing the um, appointments within the Orange County Court of Ordinances, uh, where are we here? 3.1. Can I make an amendment? C, 
and then under one is the executive operations committee appointments and it has no provision you know compelling or requiring an, an interview process that says that the executive operations committee um, considers one or more names recommended for appointment and they can appoint any qualified individual there's no requirement for an interview so uh, just probably an hour or two ago uh, being we're talking about this subject uh, corp council and I can talk about our conversation that we uh, talked about in this fall uh, talking about some of the language and things as things have come up this year uh, the people resigning and, and dealing with these there are things like you've uh, supervisor Honnell has just explained that aren't in there uh, if we wish to have those in there those type of things um, to spell some of that stuff out because we've had comments and cons uh, questions about how they should be handled or how they should be done but because they don't happen very often they haven't probably been looked at or discussed much so it was one of those things that we're talking about bringing up in the fall and there was a few other items uh, that corp council wanted to talk about and do and at that time it'd be a good time uh, to bring those those items up to try and uh, uh, see if the, we can define a lot of these things in the future better supervisor Matt Joukowsky. thank you and lawyers are always unclear and ambiguous um, but from my understanding it would take a change in ordinance to have an interview process is, is that correct it's 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 silent regarding the, the process it's up to the executive operations committee to decide how they want to select an individual uh, candidate to bring forward to the county board and I think I'm not just talking about this specific one, but there are other instances and other things too that we wanted to discuss or talk about uh, into the future. Supervisor Soik. Thank you. And with that just being said, I want to uh, put forth my full confidence in the executive ops board. Um, we did elect this board here, this body did. So I am fine with the way the ordinance reads. Um, I'm fine with our executive operations committee making the appointment. Thank you. Supervisor Splinter. I, uh, as long as it says silent on, on the issue of uh, an interview, I tend to agree with Supervisor Harnell that we should at least, if people are going to come forward in, in the community to serve on the board, we should at least give them a five minute in interview in front of the executive ops and let them make state their case and why they think they would be a good fit for the county board rather than just have people go through all the hassle of applying and everything and then find out well geez it looks like somebody else was was they had somebody else on, in mind before they even started their meeting I think it, it just opens up uh, a good uh, fairness and openness to the process and allowing, I mean, we get five minutes here to state our case, and I think five minutes is at least the amount we should give someone just to state their case at, in front of the executive ops. That way, when we come back here to uh, approve the person, at least everybody had their day in court. So I don't, without, if the ordinance is, is silent, I don't know why we can't uh, have an amendment by uh, Mr. Uh, Supervisor Honnell go through with providing a five minute interview. Supervisor Soik. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, to Supervisor Splinter's point, we do allow public comment, which would allow anyone who is putting their hat in the ring to speak. So there is already a vessel for this. Now this is not spelled out as an interview. Um, you know, I, I don't think we need to get HR involved into, in your job as the executive committee. And again, they have the opportunity to speak. Two months ago, 
everybody that had their hat, their name in the hat, had the opportunity to speak. Now, if they so chose not to, that's on them. But they had the opportunity. Just as anyone else coming up next month will have the opportunity to speak. This, th this is a no-brainer. They have the ability to speak in front of executive ops. Thank you. True. Supervisor Oki. Um, <clears throat> so it's probably somewhere, I'm not sure where, but um, the defini definition of search, how complete is that? What is the definition? Is it an application plus a resume plus a letter of application or intent? What's the criteria for search, I would wonder? Any of you help me with that? <laughs> so our office historically has published and sent out the vacancy to media. So I know in the last term, or in the last um, position for District uh, 3, WAOW picked it up and two newspapers picked that up. So that was kind of our outlet for advertising that. And then there's just the standard application form for committee and supervisor positions that was released. And then a statement on behalf of um, the applicant. So they can either include just a, a statement or a resume, whatever they, how they interpret that and want to inform the body is their choice. So if I may, it would be completing an, um, an application mm -hmm. and then some written correspondence. Mm -hmm. And if the application is incomplete with the applicants, it's overlooked or is, I mean, is that, a, is that criteria for um, uh, looking at the completeness perhaps of not the application but the applicant as well? So the past time we did this, um, we had an applicant submit their resume in a statement or a cover letter. And then that's when the application was actually posted. So I did go back to that applicant and request that they fulfill that same obligation as all the other applicants. Thank you. You're welcome. So I, again, in the future, in the fall, when we talk about things like uh, appointing someone, whether it's search, interview, and then approval, we can have that discussion if that's what we want to change the ordinance, as well as uh, our process for search and spelling those out. Those are all things that when we talk about that, that we, because things happen and come about, that brings up the discussion and whether we want to change it, alter it, or define it, because it's not defined, are all good things that we want to look to the future. So, Supervisor Medine. Just as a little bit of a historian, in the late 90s and early and early 2000s, there was some resignations. And at that time, the practice was that the, the, the county board chair would have a couple of predetermined questions, and then those questions were asked of the people, the applicants, and the each applicant that was was questioned was alone in the room. Excuse me, the other applicants were asked to leave during the time that one applicant was giving answers so that there was no advantage to being um, first, second, or third. That was the protocol in those days, just to let you know what it was. And I, if I'm not mistaken, if some of those uh, weren't appointed first, or uh, recommendation to executive ops by the chair too? Do you remember any of that? And, and I, <laughs> it's, that's a long time, Dave. That's all right. Uh, Supervisor Gifford. Yes, uh, my understanding of the um, amendment to the resolution put forth by Supervisor Honnell is just um, this is a one case um, issue that is not, she's not asking for a change to the ordinance, but rather in this one case that the uh, language of the resolution be reworded to include that one word. And uh, I don't think she should be ruled out of order <clears throat> for making this uh, amendment to the resolution. And if the majority disagree with her motion, then vote it down. Simple. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I believe that to try to 
in this particular instance by motion compel an interview process that does not exist in the ordinance I, I, I think is is not in order um, it's up to the commit the executive operations committee to decide how they're going to bring forth a qualified candidate any other discussion if there's no other discussion all those in favor with aye aye, aye. opposed aye nay supervisor honnell <laughs> Motion carries. Number 10, authorizing the 2023 budget amendments and transfers. This is resolution 136-2022-2024 submitted by the Finance Committee. This resolution does require two-thirds supermajority vote. Motion by Supervisor Dodge, seconded by Supervisor Laddick. Discussion? If there's no discussion, all those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion by Supervisor Dubeck, seconded by Supervisor Splinter. All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're here. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. A video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com slash videos.